In this series of lessons, we're going to look at the normal distribution curve, and we're going to uh, uh, look at it to identify some of the characteristics of that curve to help you understand what we're doing in statistics. Statistics is about the study of areas under curves that allow us to predict a percentage uh, or something that uh, may likely happen based upon where data lie in relation to the mean. Now, the competencies you're going to need to master in this module, we're going to examine the normal distribution curve, which we will do in this lecture. Then we will look at the standard normal distribution curve. We're going then to learn to read the z-score tables and learn to read the t-score tables. So you've got a few skills that you're going to need to master. Specifically in this lesson, the competency that you will need to obtain is to have an understanding of the normal distribution curve. In this discussion, we're going to examine the normal distribution curve. We will be looking at a very special type of distribution. The normal distribution curve is a special type of curve that we use in statistics. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain to you the normal distribution curve and give you some insight into what it looks like. Let's go back out to this picture. Now, if you'll notice in this picture, we have a curve which is balanced upon the mean. Now, what this means is, is that if we have raw data, that they are much more likely to be close to the mean in value than they are to be far from the mean. Now, a normal curve is perfectly balanced upon, upon the mean. Now, let's suppose we go one standard deviation above the mean. Then what that does in the normal curve is allow us to trap a specific area, which is 34%. And if we go one standard deviation below the mean, we've trapped another 30%, 34%, which means that overall that 65% of the data in the normal distribution lie between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the mean. Now, similarly, you see here where it's one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. Now, similarly, if we go out to two standard deviations above the mean from one above to two above, we trap another 14% of the data. And from one below to two below the mean, we trap another 14% of the data. This is a total of 96% of the data in the normal distribution are trapped between two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. So the mean and the standard deviation really can be used to describe what percentages of data lie in a set range. Now, if we go up what is above two standard deviations or what percent of the data are above two standard deviation for the mean, we find that there's roughly 2% and there's another 2% uh, below two standard deviations from the mean. Now, keep in mind, of course, that 100% of the area is under the curve, and 100% is often written as 1.0000. In mathematics and in statistics, we, we may talk percents, but most of the work that we do, we will do by converting it to a decimal equivalent. For instance, 34% is written as 0 0.34, 14% is written as 0 0.14. Now, notice that the normal curve is perfectly balanced upon the mean. 50% of the data lie above the mean, and 50% of the data lie below the mean. And then, based upon how many standard deviations above or below the mean, we can trap specific amounts of, of area to know what is going on with the curve. Now, Specific amounts are determined based on how many uh, standard deviation points a data point is from the mean. So this is really a very, very powerful curve. The, you have really three skills that you're going to need to obtain. And I told you earlier, they are you're going to need to understand the normal distribution. And now we're going in the next lecture discuss the standard normal distribution and we will proceed to learn to read the table so that we can find those areas under the curve. I know that you're going to do well with this. I'm proud of you. Don't panic. This really isn't very hard, is it? A normal distribution curve just lets us know what areas lie 
above and below the mean. What percentage of the data points do if they're distributed accordingly? Good luck. <laughs>